Welcome to the Accelerate Service Delivery with Kanban Boards for Dispatchers and Engineers webinar. Today's presenter is Matt Fox. Please note that all lines are in listen-only mode. That This means after joining today's presentation, your line will automatically be muted. We welcome any questions at any time during today's presentation. Please enter your questions into the questions box in your webinar console. At the conclusion of today's event, our speaker will be holding a Q&A session. And with that, let's get started. Matt, take it away. All right. Thank you, Jordan. Appreciate that. So for everyone attending, we want to welcome you here. Thanks for giving us part of your day. We're really glad you're here. Today, we're going to talk about how to take back control of your service work in your MSP using agile techniques, especially Kanban. We're going to talk about you know what does a dispatcher do, uh, service manager, what do the engineers do, and so on. Um, you know, this sort of thing is always important, but it's even more important now when most of us are working from home, uh, at least it's sometime, uh, because of the COVID-19 crisis. Now, uh, we're an MSP, actually. Uh, we know what you're feeling, and you know, we've been working home for, uh, from home for a while now, too. And so we're going to give you a framework to deliver your service quickly, efficiently, making your customers happy, meeting your SLAs with the team you have today, whether you're working from home, uh, you know, whether you're a, sur a sur surprise remote team or whether you embrace that way of working a long time ago. <clears throat> so a little bit more about us. Uh, yeah, top left as a company, that's actually a unit of Kirchhoff Technologies or KTI. That's the, uh, the MSP in Vancouver, British Columbia area since about 2007. I'm heading up the Kanban division here. Been with KTI and some associated companies since 2010. And I spent the last 10 years involved in IT projects and service in a variety of contexts, including running support for a network SD-WAN product and participating in service work and triage and whatnot here at KTI. We're going to be teaching what we've learned from a bit of study and a lot of practice here at KTI. And so if you came here for the project webinar that we had last month, then just sit tight while I introduce some Kanban basics. Uh, that'll be quick, and then we'll get into new content for the uh, for service delivery. So let me tell you a little bit about what, uh, kind of how Kanban came to be. So at uh, KTI, we um, used one of the two main uh, say, dispatch techniques that are used by a lot of MSPs. So there's two main methods here. One I call the free-for-all method, and that's what we used. So uh, that the free-for-all method is where basically technicians have a lot of freedom about picking which tickets they take. You know, they might just pick straight off of the queue of unassigned work, and then they have complete responsibility for finishing off those tickets using whatever method they want. So that tends to um, if you if you looked at the perspective of one ticket as it went from new to complete, it would go through a progression of statuses. Sometimes it looks like this. Starts out in new, goes to in progress, waiting, in progress, waiting, done yet, waiting, in progress, done yet, finally complete. Something like that. I mean, you kind of get, it's a bit of a joke, but you get the idea. Like, that's not unusual. It's a bit chaotic. So we did that, and we had some problems, pretty typical problems of an MSP that uses that model. You know, too many tickets started but not finished. Four, we, I think we had 400 open tickets with 10 technicians. It was unmanageable. Uh, the technicians feel overwhelmed. You know, obviously they had lots of work to do, but it was hard to say what was actually important today. It took a long time to close tickets. Uh, to, you know, technicians would cherry pick those tickets, and those that nobody wanted to do, they would just get ignored, and so the customers would feel neglected. Uh, and they would learn that you know if they're kind of the squeaky wheel that gets the grease, then then that's how they what they need to do to get their problems solved. And so it really was not a great situation. So we needed we know that we needed something better. Um, now I'll mention also the other main method that MSPs use. Uh, I call it the Tetris method. So you know the game Tetris, uh, video game where you um, you know blocks come down from the top, you put them in, uh, arrange them very carefully uh, so they fit around all the other blocks, they fit just right, um, and uh, a complete line removes the, the line and, uh, and you work from there. Um, so you know you're kind of having to be very fit things in very precise and when things go bad it tends to go bad very quickly. Um, so I call it I call this um, Tetris mode. This corresponds to using calendars to schedule out all the work. 
Uh, so that's where you have a dispatcher that takes every single service ticket, they decide which tech is going to do the work, and then they estimate how long that work is going to be, and then they find a sufficiently large free slot in that technician's calendar and stuff it in there in just the right spot. So uh, ConnectWise will, uh, teaches this as a model. They, uh, they have terms for it. They say, you know, paint your calendar green and my life is my calendar. If you've heard those before, that's what I mean. Now, so what's wrong with this? Well, uh, three things. It's a lot of work. It doesn't add value for the customer and it's very, very fragile. So, uh, you know, even when things go exactly according to plan, this method is a lot of work uh, because the dispatcher has to estimate how long each ticket is going to take and they have to select a technician, and then they have to find a corresponding slot in that technician's calendar for this work. And it requires the technician's calendar to be accurate and complete. So they, you know, technicians spend time making sure that that's the case. Uh, the second problem, again, the customer, this just doesn't provide value to the customer. For most work that's sent from the customer, you know, help desk work, they don't necessarily care at what time of day the work is done or even which technician does it. They just want you to treat that work in the appropriate urgency for whatever that is. If it's an emergency or if it's just you know not a big deal sort of work, they want you to understand that and work it in that urgency. But usually they don't care what time of day it gets done. So this process doesn't actually add any value that the customer cares about. And then finally, it's very fragile uh, because just like in Tetris, one little mistake can build up to a big, big problem. So, uh, you know, the... Uh, it could be that the ticket takes longer than the allotted time, uh, which, as we know, happens all the time. Uh, or maybe the member has less availability than the calendar, uh, than was expected in the calendar. You know, maybe they got sick or had some personal errand or existing obligation that wasn't in the calendar or came uh, after that ticket was scheduled. So um, when one of those things happened, which happens all the time, then the technician needs to do one of two things. Either they keep working on that ticket that they were assigned, despite that the calendar says to stop. Uh, so they ignore the calendar. And that means that the later tickets uh, that are in the calendar need to be rescheduled, which is potentially a lot of work for the dispatcher. So frequently, um, be, because frequently that means many tickets, not just uh, one or two tickets, but a lot of tickets need to move back in the calendar. Uh, or the tech has the other option to just uh, obey what the calendar says and leave that ticket unfinished, you know, despite that maybe they only had 15 more minutes to finish up that ticket. But they leave that and they start working on something else just because the calendar said so. And that leads to a lot of unfinished tickets where the work has been started, but the value hasn't been delivered to the customer because the technician just kind of quit and started working on something else because the calendar said so. Um, and in that case, still the work needs to be rescheduled. So in this mode, you can see that tickets sometimes get scheduled three or four or five times or more. Uh, it's really frustrating to the customer. Um, and it's a, it's a, a lot of work. I once had talked to an MSP where the dispatcher was spending two hours a day just to schedule the work for two engineers. Um, so that's very, very expensive. And we have better ways to do that. And, you know, um, Tetris is a good game, but it's not meant for managing your work. So to be clear, um, some work does need to be in the calendar, things that are coordinated with others. Like, for example, when uh, the technician needs to go on site, so they say, I'm going to be there at three o'clock or whatever, um, scheduled outages and things like this. Uh, but that's kind of a minority for most MSP tech work, except for folk, you know, folks who are always on the road. Um, but for a lot of technicians at an MSP, that sort of work is, is the minority. And so we don't need to use the calendar just to make sure that work gets done. And we've got better ways to do that. And that's what we found at KTI. Um, you know, despite, uh, you know, with our uh, free-for-all method that we were using and other folks use this Tetris method, <clears throat> uh, this happens even though you have a very, uh, very powerful and expensive tool, you know, ConnectWise or Autotask or whatever. And you probably have good data, you know, your tickets have a good summary, description, notes, time entries, and so on. But um, despite that you have all this good information, uh, it still ends up being chaos. Uh, and we hear the same problems from Autotask users as well. So we knew of Kanban and agile techniques from some of our experience in software development. And so we decided to try this at our MSP. And uh, so we found that Kanban works for help desk, works really well actually. So we've made major improvements now, even though we're still busy, we feel under control and we understand our own work and our customers are happy. So I'm gonna teach you how to use Kanban to get the right balance of structure, 
and flexibility to manage your service. Um, after that, only if you want, I'm going to show you the tools that we use. We still use this today, uh, tools that we offer to others to make it fast and easy for you. And after that, <clears throat> I'll take questions, anything about service delivery or our Kanban tool. So you can type your questions in the questions box and I'll get to them at the end. So let's get into Kanban. So what is it? Well, um, you know, a lot of people have just recently heard about Kanban and they think it's kind of a recent idea, but it's not. It actually came out of Toyota automobile manufacturing in the 1940s. So the ideas are, are um, old, actually. So it's a set of ideas that have to do with efficiency, uh, reducing waste, and representing work visually, which is kind of one of the, the key focuses here is uh, on the Kanban boards is representing it visually. Actually, that's part of, part of what it means. Uh, the can means visual and ban means card. Uh, so one of the ideas is that we uh, we need to be managing the work. We don't manage the workers. And uh, that actually goes back to the calendar scheduling where we uh, we no longer schedule the workers. We more focus on the work and the tickets that we have. Uh, it uh, You may have heard of uh, poll versus push where uh, it's better for engineers to pull work to themselves when they are available, or when they're ready to take on new work versus um, pushing that work to those members uh, because that leads to them getting overloaded. Um, Kanban has been widely adopted in software development industry and now it's becoming known in many industries, in the IT industry as well as in others. In fact, you may have heard of Trello. That is a... Uh, a, a Kanban, a pretty widely known Kanban tool, like I use it myself for my own personal life. And uh, they were sold in uh, 2017, I think, for $425 million to Atlassian. So that's big bucks. Um, so this is um, definitely becoming more broadly known. Uh, also, you may have heard of Asana. It's a project management tool. Just uh, a few months ago, they uh, filed paperwork to go public. So um, it, it, Kanban is really becoming widely known in many industries, not just in software development and now not even in IT. Why is that? Because uh, there's a, a number of benefits to Kanban. So one is, uh, you know, because of the focus on visibility is that we get to see the work in progress and uh, limit it. So that, uh, you know, in our example, that would be tickets that you've started and you haven't finished yet. We want to focus, uh, we want to be able to see how much work is in progress and then limit that. I'll explain why later. Uh, it helps us to be more responsive. Actually, that come, that's one of the benefits that you get when you limit your work in progress. You can uh, easily see what things are ongoing and when they when these tickets were last touched, so you can stop work from falling through the cracks. You can improve the flow of work by identifying and then addressing bottlenecks in your team, uh, such as someone who uh, is responsible for a lot of different tickets because they're a subject matter expert and so most of the work in a team goes through one or two individuals that can lead to bottlenecks so Kanban helps you identify that so that you can fix that helps teams to stop feeling overwhelmed because it helps you clarify who's responsible for each part of the work so people can focus on just what they're responsible for and also have a clear view of uh, um, uh, is a good tool for communicating clearly with your team because it's all represented visually and everybody gets the same uh, the same information and they can just you know lo literally look at the same screen and uh, and all be sharing the same view and also it's not difficult to adopt you can adopt Kanban with small and manageable manageable changes you don't it doesn't have to rewrite all of your workflows right away I mean it, it could be that a lot of your workflows will be rewritten eventually but you can adopt Kanban piece by piece, for example, adopting the Kanban boards first so that you get the visibility even uh, before you start using some of the Kanban methods. So that's why we love Kanban and some of the benefits that we've gotten from that. So uh, that, you know, that's a little overview of Kanban. Certainly there's a lot more uh, that we could teach and that you could learn about, but uh, let's get into how does this actually apply to service delivery right now? Well, um, there are Three key things that you would need to decide on if you want to start using Kanban methods in an MSP, uh, specifically for help desks. So those three things that you're going to need to do to um, to begin adopting this are you're going to need to identify the key stages of your service pipeline. 
then you're going to review possibly adapt your triage method and then we're going to need to look at your dispatch method um, so I'll quickly go through uh, some of these uh, these kind of have to do with the, the front side of the work you know how does work get into your pipeline and then I'll, later I'll talk about what do the engineers do now you know when you're using Kanban workflows how does the engineer's day change compared to just you know a free-for-all method versus a Tetris method well what do you do with the Kanban method it's actually very simple. So let's talk about uh, the, that first decision uh, that you'll need to do when you're adopting Kanban and look at the stages of the work. So um, bef before we look at some examples, uh, let's take a look uh, or think about this in terms of like, what if what if we were thinking about a factory floor? Actually, we, sometimes we come back to this because Kanban, like I mentioned, came out of like auto car manufacturing and so uh, it, it really grew first in manufacturing sector and sometimes it's, it helps us think about some of these methods if we kind of compared our workflows to what would happen on a factory floor say where there's workstations and some widget that's being built moves along the factory floor to the different workstations where at each workstation some additional value is something is done to this widget that adds some value, it gets closer to being completed at every workstation it goes through. So uh, let's think about that in terms of your workflows, like how does work move through your workflow at your help desk, um, having a little bit of value added to it each time until it's complete. So what does that look like in a help desk? Well, uh, here are some common key stages that you'd find. Uh, one would be new, so that would be work that comes in straight, you know, could be straight from your email connector, uh, entered by, you know, uh, entered from a phone call or a you know, chat or whatever, whatever it could be. This is stuff that really hasn't been touched at all yet. Uh, then we have a um, ready. That's a pretty common status. That means that there's been some triage or dis dispatch process done, and um, now it's ready for an engineer to work on. Another key stage is started. A lot of people call this in progress. They can mostly be the same thing but we kind of I'll explain the, why we sometimes call it started uh, basically this is everything that engineers have done some work on already and they they could work if they so chose to so um, it's not necessarily for showing what's being handled at this very moment so that's why we kind of uh, we recommend moving away from the term in progress because that certainly has the suggestion that they're working on it at this very moment so we call it started instead because that represents the key thing about this work is that this uh, this is work that you already have some investment in. The engineer has done some work on this and you, you could continue to work it if you chose to. Um, so th this work that started has a huge impact on how fast you can turn around tickets. So keeping the number of started tickets to a minimum, like for example, two, uh, well, ideally one per engineer could be two. Uh, but, you know, at the most, three tickets per technician. That's kind of the key thing that Agile can help you with, and that's what allows your team to be so much more responsive than non-Agile teams. Um, now, if in your team it is really important to see what the engineer is working on at this very moment, then you can have a special status for that um, in your PSA. Uh, maybe you, uh, as far as Kanban goes, you could keep that in its own column or indicate that with a different background color on that card or, or whatever. Um, so if that is important, you can do that. But what we suggest is that it's not actually that important. What's much more important is knowing uh, all of the things that is in the engineer's court to do right now. Uh, another common stage is waiting. So that's things that are waiting on somebody outside of the team to do before this ticket can continue. Uh, so frequently that's waiting for information from the customer. Could be waiting for a vendor to do something. Maybe a part is coming in the mail, uh, anything like that. Another key stage is scheduled. So, um, you know, I mentioned that we don't put work into the calendar just for the sake of getting it done, but there are things that do need to be in the calendar for legitimate reasons. You know, like if you told the customer, I'm gonna be on site at three o'clock tomorrow, then that should be in the scheduled status. You may have others like the uh, review. Uh, some MSPs have this where, the engineer has done the work they say it's complete but someone else needs to look at that just give that a, a quick run over and uh, confirm that that is done and finally the last stage would be completed which means you know as far as the engineers team is concerned it's all done so um, if we were to look at this 
in terms of like a basic Kanban board, you know, this is just a basic example. You could do this with sticky notes on the wall, you know, just with some tape, make your columns on the wall, uh, write on the right on the sticky notes and uh, you know, you could move these sticky notes between the different columns to track how your work uh, is progressing. So you can see that pretty easily here. You know, you'd have a, a sticky note with some title written on it that is for work that's just begun. No one's really done anything on it at all. These are things that have gone through the triage process. Ideally, to, um, work would jump over uh, the waiting and the scheduled stage straight to started when an engineer takes that work. And then from there, ideally, it would go to completed, but sometimes it's going to go to waiting or to scheduled. Those tickets are eventually going to go back to started before they go to complete. So pretty straightforward. And you know, if you have a board, and it, you know, if you were all in an office, you could all agree. Uh, you could all you know observe this. Everybody would get the same information, whether you're the dispatcher or the engineer, and it would really uh, eliminate communications problems by having this uh, clearly laid out. So uh, that is the first key decision that you need to make when you're adopting Kanban. So let's go to the uh, second one, which is looking at your triage method. Basically, you're going to have um, you're going to decide between the method of you know are you going to have somebody doing a triage process as you know it could be super simple you know like one minute per ticket uh, or are you going to have your engineers doing this role and we do have a recommendation about that um, and it actually could be that most of your triage process that you have right now is, is already very effective and you don't need to change very much. Um, we just want to make sure that you have a reasonable process when you start so that you minimize uh, basically when tickets get into the queue for an engineer to work that they're a good ticket you know they're not uh, there's not a lot of data that the engineer needs to clean up they're not missing obvious information. So that's why we want to just do this check now although it could be that if you have a good triage process you don't have to change anything. So, uh, you know, what's triage for? Well, that's what moves tickets from the new column or status uh, to ready. It gives you a chance to check things on the ticket, um, such as, uh, you know, the, the company record, make sure it didn't come in with the wrong company record, uh, you know, the contact, priority, uh, SLAs, categorization, and things like that. Uh, it allows you a chance to identify those emergency tickets, things that really need to be pushed to an engineer because somebody's got to work on them right now. Um, make sure it has all the ob necessary obvious information, like if someone asked for a new user account, did they give you the name of the user, things like that. Uh, if, it's, if it's missing something obvious, you can bump that back to the customer right away. It also allows you to set realistic budget and estimated hours uh, as a limit. You know, you could use this as a limit for the technicians to indicate when they should stop working. You know, if, you, if it seems like it's a ticket that shouldn't probably take more than an hour then put an hour as the budget on that and then the engineers know you know if they um, if they come up to an hour then they should probably stop come back to the service manager and figure out how they want to go forward with that ticket just as a, as a way to be really clear about what the expectations are now there is one new step that you will have in uh, in a kanban triage process and that is the uh, the ordering of the ticket so um, i'll get to that in just a second um, but first, uh, now if if you do find that you have engineers, um, you don't want to have a dedicated dispatch role, and you want your engineers to actually take straight from new. Um, I would warn you that this some teams can do this, but it is usually only done successfully when the team is small and very disciplined. So you need to keep very short queues, um, and you need to. Uh, yeah, it really doesn't scale very well. So if you have 10 engineers, you're probably not going to be able to do this. It really works a lot better with two, three, four sort of engineers. Uh, if Otherwise, you can end up with a lot of work in progress or tickets can sit in the new column for a really long time and it starts to look like the free-for-all mode. So um, we recommend that you, know, you have this uh, triage role if you have more than you know, four or maybe five members. It doesn't need to be a dedicated person, uh, so you don't need to think of this as like somebody you got to hire to do this process. This can it just needs to be a dedicated role. But your it could be that your uh, engineers actually sit in this role from time to time. Maybe they rotate every day. Maybe you have a kind of weekly role. Um, <clears throat> but uh, it's only a dedicated role, not an, uh, an individual member. So um, 
yeah, so we'll get into the uh, the ordering of those tickets in a little bit. And so uh, now let me talk about the third thing uh, that you're going to need to decide on when you adopt Kanban as your as your method in your help desk. So <clears throat> that is the uh, the dispatch method. And so there's two key things that you need to decide on here. One is uh, whether you do a uh, what sort of queue you have for that work. Um, the first option is the technician or uh, having multiple queues. So basically, what this means is that when work arrives, part of the dis triage and dispatch process is to assign it to a member. And so what you see is that uh, each member actually gets their own queue of work. So this member is uh, you know, working, this is what they're working on. And then after they're done this, then they have their own queue of work. So they don't need to be concerned with what everybody else is doing. You know, this member has their own queue, this member has their own queue, and so on. The other option is a team queue or just a single queue of work. So each member has the one thing that they're working on at a time. And when they finish that, they actually they don't have their own queue of work assigned already. There's just one single queue of work. And when they're done that, then they go and take whatever is at the first position here because these have been ranked by the triage person or the dispatcher. So those are the two key differences. Um, and you've actually already seen this in action, I think. So let me compare it to something that you see from time to time, because uh, I think that'll make it a lot more clear, you know, like what are some of the advantages and disadvantages here. So can think about how you've gone to a supermarket lately. There's generally a couple of ways that, well, generally grocery stores use this sort of method in terms of when you're checking out. So basically, uh, you know, if this is, say this is a cashier, the cashier will be helping one person at a time, and then other people have basically selected their cashier when they check out, and they line up and they wait there. And so, uh, you know, this person who's first in line here knows that they're going to be served by this cashier when this person is done. Uh, now, compare that to another mode where and this can be used in some grocery stores. I, I've seen it more commonly in other types of stores uh, or at a grocery store. This could be used for like the self-checkout typically where <clears throat> there's only a single queue. Everybody who wants to, you know, like for example, use a self-checkout, uh, they will line up in a single line. And then when they get to the front of the line, they wait uh, until there's a free cashier or self-checkout machine or whatever. And then they go straight to whatever is the next one that becomes free. So that's a, I think, a real-world example that uh, everybody's seen. So just you know, think about in those terms. So, and I think you'll understand what are some of the pros and cons of each of these modes when you think about in that, because you've actually all, already experienced it. So, um, what are some of the advantages of the team queue? Well, uh, just having a single queue is better because it's more responsive. So new work can start when any technician becomes free. So to take a look at that, um, when you think about this work here, this work is only gonna start when this work is done because the only person who's gonna take this work is this member here. And I'll compare that to this sort of mode. Like if we were gonna question when is this item, which is the first one in the list here, when is that going to start? Well, it's going to start when anybody becomes free. So it could be this person finishes this ticket, could be this person finishes that ticket. Who knows? Doesn't matter. But this one is going to start when any one of these becomes free. So that's what makes it more responsive. And you've experienced that when you sit at, you know, your store, you're waiting for the checkout. And if you are in the, in the lineup, um, you know, the single queue, uh, sometimes those queues are pretty long, but you've experienced that those keep moving fairly steadily because the only thing that needs to happen for uh, the, the queue to move forward is anybody finishes. So you, you've seen how those are more responsive. Uh, they're also a bit more efficient um, because there's no need for a dispatcher to select which, uh, which technician to do that work or to monitor uh, those tickets for progress. So um, for example, in a mode like this, because um, 
these tickets can be blocked. You know, if this turns out to be a really long ticket, then that's going to delay all of these tickets here. And so sometimes the dispatcher is going to want to monitor all of this work to make sure that nothing here is getting blocked and slowing any of these down if these are actually a bit more urgent. Uh, so that is a bit of extra work to do that you don't really have to worry about in this kind of mode. So um, because it's actually less work overall, that mode is more efficient. Now, however, <clears throat> the technician queue has one big advantage in that uniform training is not required. Um, so in order to use the single queue method, all of these members have to be able to do all of this work. And that uh, it sounds simple, but uh, you know, this is actually a challenging place to get to in your team because in the real world you're going to have some junior folks you're going to have some senior folks you're going to have some people who tend to work with some customers uh, other people who tend to work with others or you know maybe they just finished a project so they're familiar with a certain type of work so um, it's actually a bit difficult to get to the place where any of these members can take all of this work uh, it requires uh, some distinct effort in terms of like documentation for your company your customers and your projects and uh, and training in the technologies that you support as well so you certainly can do it uh, but it does take more effort and so this is sometimes why this is used more commonly is because this is just easier to do despite that as a, as far as workflow goes it does have some disadvantages so take those into account when you decide what you need to do however I have some good news in that uh, a hybrid method is possible uh, so what you can do is um, you can <clears throat> do the uh, the uh, team queue method for any of the work that anybody can do and for work that uh, really does need to be done by a specific member well then go ahead and just assign it to that member so so basically um, the simpler work can just sit in a team queue and anybody can do that but the more complex work uh, that needs to be assigned to your subject matter expert, you can go ahead and do that. Assign that to your subject matter expert. Uh, this does have something to do that basically it relates to support tiers. So you may be doing this already if you have a tier one, tier two, tier, tier three, and so on. You may find that you've, you've actually solved this problem. And so you can, uh, you can start with the technician queue now. Uh, also because that's more that's more similar to what you might be doing if you're doing calendar dispatching. Well, you when you do calendar dispatching, part of that is a, uh, selecting which member needs to do the work. And so this is similar. So you're already doing that. And then later you can move towards the hybrid or the team method later. Um, ditching the calendar as far as managing the work actually gets you most of the value. Uh, and then you can get further value when you go further and move from the technician to the team queue method. So let's look at this in terms of uh, what the how it would actually look on the Kanban board. So we have the same columns here that we had before. And then now we've actually split the board into what we call swim lanes, basically horizontal lanes that are grouping the work by some property. Um, this one is so here we have these lanes, one for uh, first for unassigned work, then for the different members in our team, Alice and Bob. And so when we have a technician queue, work would come in and it would be unassigned while it's in the new column. And then a triage person or dispatch person is going to uh, move that into the ready column and also assign it to a member. And then they're also gonna prioritize the work here. So you know, like these are not in a random order. These are ordered from uh, basically top to bottom, the most important to the least important in each swim lane. So this ticket is more important than that ticket and this ticket for Bob is more important than that ticket. And so the en engineers know that when they come looking for new work, they don't take just from anywhere they want to, they take from the top. And so that's kind of how you get the, uh, that's kind of the equivalent of uh, compared to calendar dispatching uh, where you would put the most important things earlier in the day uh, this is kind of how you get that same uh, that same benefit is by putting the most important things at the top here. So that was what the technician queues would look like. Now, if we do the team queue, then it looks a little bit different. Actually, we still have unassigned work here in the ready column, and then uh, you know if they're side by side, probably this one's the most important, then this one, then this one, then this one. And so when engineers finish off what they're doing and they're looking for new work, then they come to the team queue the unassigned queue here and just take whatever is at the top and they move it down to their own started 
column in their own swim lane. So you know exactly what's going on. Everybody, like the visibility is still clear. We can see exactly who's working on that ticket and what stage it's in. Um, but now we uh, get a very responsive team because uh, this new work is always starting anytime anybody in the team becomes free and available for new work. So that kind of covers the top three things that you would need to decide and uh, begin to implement when you want to begin using Kanban methods for help desk. Now let's talk about how do the technicians and the engineers work. So as I mentioned, uh, you know you're going to see the work moving from uh, left to right on the board, from the uh, side over here where we have you know new and ready and so on. And then when the engineers work on it, it's going to be more on this side, especially. You know, what we want to see is they get to complete it. So the work moves from left to right, but the technicians are actually going as far as uh, deciding what to work on, either when they come in first thing in the morning or they uh, finish something and now they need to look for new work to do. Well, they're going to move the opposite direction. They move from right to left. So basically they uh, favor working on tickets that are further to the, uh, uh, further to the, right side of the board, and then they move towards the left. So this means that the techs are always working on what's closest to being done already, so that the tickets uh, can be closed and that value delivered to the customer. So uh, they're only gonna start new work when they have no other uh, already started work that they could do. So I, ideally, their started or their in progress column is empty before they look for new work. That's how you maintain that low work in progress and become very responsive to your customers. Uh, so when you're starting out with Kanban, you might see that you know your technicians have like 15 started tickets. So yeah, um, it's going to be a while before they start new work. That I mean, with the exception of maybe emergency stuff, of course they're going to have to do that. But ideally. Uh, they're going to get a chance to work down that big queue of things that are in their court to do, and um, they will get there. And uh, then you're going to have you know the most you're going to have the most responsive team in your region when you get that down and make that improvement from getting you know 15 tickets per engineer down to one or two. You're going to be very very responsive. So uh, when you are ready to start new work, you take from the top ticket in the ready column. So that could be in the unassigned swim lane if that's the you're using the team queue method, or it could be in the engineer's own swim lane and ready column when they uh, are when you're using the technician queue method. And you take the top one because it's been put there on purpose by the dispatcher. Yeah. So. Um, the work is moving from left to right, uh, and the engineers are working from right to left. <clears throat> so basically, uh, in this in this example, Alice, uh, she has two tickets that are already started, so she should not really be uh, taking from ready. Now, these are things that they represent that these are in her court to do, and so really she should be focusing on getting these things done. Uh, ideally, they can be done and sent to completed. It could be though that she does some amount of work and then they go to waiting because she needs more information or she needs a part or whatever. Uh, or it could be that the next step of the work needs to happen at a certain time of day in the future, so it goes to scheduled. So uh, that's what Alice should do with these tickets before she starts new work. Bob, though, has apparently nothing in started right now, so he's good to start new work. Um, so working from the left, uh, pardon me, from the right to the left side of the board, obviously we don't need to worry about completed work. There's nothing here in started, there's uh, nothing in scheduled, and even in scheduled, we don't have to worry about that because that's coming in the calendar. So we don't really consider that when we're moving from right to left. The waiting column, um, that requires a little bit of care. Sometimes it's, you don't need to do this every single time you look for new work as an engineer, but it's a good idea to take a quick review of this every so often, you know, once a day maybe. <clears throat> depending on how fast this changes. But you want to take a look in here occasionally to make sure that nothing that was waiting has now been freed up, you know, because maybe the customer responded. I, ideally, there would be some other method that when a customer responds, you find out about that. And so you'd know that there's something that was in waiting and is now available to work. You can just dump that over to started when that happens if you want. 
Um, <clears throat> but in, in case you didn't get that notification, it's a good idea to review here from time to time, just that nothing here is available to work. And if nothing is available to work right now, then you hop over here and you take from the top of the ready column. So this is basically how the engineers work. Instead of looking at their calendar for everything, they just look in this example, they could be in their uh, in their own swim lane, just working from right side of the board to the left side of the board. <clears throat> so as far as the technicians go, uh, I just want to note that they are still going to observe their calendars. Most of their day should be free. Um, the, the meetings that appear in their calendar and the scheduled tickets should be the minority uh, of their time because um, Kanban really only works when the technicians have substantial uh, non-scheduled time. You know, if you fill up the technician's schedule with 80% uh, percent of their time is filled up with stuff in the calendar, then they're only gonna get 20% of their time to work on these tickets using the Kanban method, and so they're just not gonna make a whole lot of progress. So um, you wanna avoid that. Also, I just wanna mention how you can um, handle waiting tickets. So some teams like to have uh, those continue to be assigned to the engineers that were working on them when they went to waiting, uh, meaning, you know, uh, Alice, for example, is working on the ticket. She realizes she needs some additional information. She, she sends, a, sends a message to the customer, puts it in waiting, and it stays assigned to her. And then she's responsible for knowing when the engine, when the customer has responded so that she can work on that ticket again. Some, some teams like that. Other teams like to have those waiting tickets, uh, basically somebody else responsible for monitoring when the response comes in and you know just confirming that actually answers the question so you can do that either way i honestly i don't have a recommend strong recommendation one way or the other you people are successful doing it both ways uh, just be clear about uh, changing the assignee if someone else is responsible for monitoring that ticket for a response, make sure it's assigned to the person who's responsible for that. Or you know, possibly you could uh, make a case for having that unassigned. But um, someone needs to, it needs to be clear who is responsible for monitoring that. And make sure that's not, uh, not assigned to the engineer anymore in that case so that they can uh, be, you know, just be really clear on that and they can focus on the things that they are, they are doing. So let's talk about what an engine, uh, what the service manager or possibly dispatcher is going to be doing as um, you know as the engineers are working. We do need somebody to be monitoring these things, uh, this work, to make sure that things move forward appropriately. So what is a service manager going to be looking at in terms of, uh, you know? Is this work moving forward like we want? Well, we're gonna look for some uh, exceptions that can happen. Uh, for example, the due date of the ticket versus how much progress is being made. For example, if we know that there's a substantial ticket uh, and it's due tomorrow and it hasn't even started, then that's a problem. So we need to monitor for the due date. Similarly, with the SLAs, you need to monitor for that. And make sure that you're uh, treating that with the appropriate um, urgency to get that done according to what the SLA says. Uh, the uh, hours logged versus the budget and estimated hours, for example, you know, if something appeared at the beginning to be at most a one hour ticket and then an the engineer ends up taking it two or three hours on it, then we know that something blew up there and uh, the service manager should get involved and just figure out, you know, is this what happened there? Is that reasonable? Uh, do we need to cut that off? Do we need to get a more senior person working on that or whatever the case may be? We want to look for things that have been in one column for a long time. So uh, the definition of long depends on which column it's in. For example, if it's in the in progress column, we don't want to see something sitting there for maybe two, uh, two days or more. Um, things should be handled within it two days when it's in, in progress. But if it's waiting in the, uh, well, if it's in the waiting column, then maybe it's okay if it's there for a week. You know, that doesn't bother us, maybe that's okay. It could be even two weeks in some cases. So you're gonna to want to monitor for how long it's been in the column with consideration of which column that is. We wanna look for tickets that have been for a long time without a time entry or a note. If they're in a 
column where we would expect to see time entries, for example, if it's in, in progress or started, then we would want to see a time entry every day, ideally. Um, if we don't, then that means that that's um, in our court to do, but it's not getting any attention. And so that might call for some changes or uh, some extra attention to get that moving forward again. And we want to be looking for bottlenecks, which, uh, as I explained earlier, that's where uh, one engineer has a a large proportion of the work. Yeah, you know, if you have, say, five engineers in your help desk team, ideally, everybody would get one fifth of the work. But you can frequently end up in a place where one of the one of the engineers basically gets double their kind of um, proportion of the work that you'd hope that they have because you know, they're the expert or whatever so it's it seems unavoidable but this really slows down your team when uh, when even one member like that is overworked so that's something that you want to understand and monitor for and then think about how you can address that if you see that happening and uh, as you monitor for those here are some just some ideas about Things that you techniques you can use to fix some of those problems. Uh, obviously, you need to understand what the cause is. You know what, what's causing this particular problem because not all of these resolutions are going to be apl applicable for every kind of problem. But here's just kind of a some ideas. Um, you can uh, swarm a ticket, meaning you can assign a bunch of additional engineers. That uh, swarming is kind of an agile term for just uh, focusing on something for a short period of time. It, basically, the sort of work where uh, it can benefit from a bunch of eyes on that. Uh, frequently, it's an urgent sort of thing. And if you get, instead of one person working on it, if you can manage three or four or five people working on it and just knock that out, then that's a valuable thing to do. Uh, you can reassign work, meaning move it to a different engineer. That is appropriate if uh, this is because of a bottleneck or somebody is working on a long ticket and uh, some of the other tickets that they have are uh, definitely going to be neglect getting neglected because they're working on what happens to be a long ticket so move some of that other work to somebody else uh, you can stop assigning new work to an engineer this is particularly useful if they have a large uh, amount of work in progress and they just need some time where they don't get any any new work queued up for them and uh, just kind of leave them alone for a while and let them work down that queue so that can be useful you can reprioritize re or change the ranking of a ticket. This is useful when you see that maybe uh, it's a ticket with a due date or an SLA that's approaching. And uh, so it actually is, it becomes more urgent because no one's working on it, but we need to be working on it because the due date or the SLA is approaching. So reprioritizing can help with that. Uh, sometimes the engineers just need to be reminded to follow up. You know, maybe they just forgot about it. This certainly happens with ConnectWise or Autotask on its own, can even happen from time to time if you have a Kanban board, despite the better visibility that that offers. Sometimes they just need a reminder. Uh, sometimes the ticket is just too big and you need to split it up into multiple different tickets. Uh, or sometimes you might find that a ticket is, um, uh, 80% of the ticket is complete and maybe 20% is not complete. And then you can actually just split it up into two tickets, one that's already done, because that ticket represents the 80% of the work that you already did. Make a new ticket for that 20% of that work remaining. And then you can get that in, kind of reset that, put that back into your queues and not worry about uh, the fact that it's mostly done because you've split that up into two different tickets. And sometimes you just need to reduce the scope uh, or increase the budget on a ticket. Um, if that's just, you know, the, the fact of whatever technology, whatever the technology is, uh, sometimes that is the right thing to do. Or you even cancel it. If uh, the business case is gone, you know, you realize this is just, uh, the, well, obviously you do this in conjunction with the customer, but you realize that this just isn't providing value. They don't need this anymore. Or if they just ignore you, sometimes you just have to cancel it. You don't want stuff hanging out forever if the customer just really isn't getting back to you. So that that sums up a lot of the techniques that we have and the recommendations that we have. Um, if there's one thing that I want you to remember today, it's this, that on a Kanban board, where you know these are representing the columns, remember that, that uh, the work, you wanna see those move from uh, you know, the left to the right, from the new side to the completed side. And then the key thing here is that the workers themselves are gonna be moving in the opposite direction. They're focusing on what's uh, closest to being complete. Um, basically, what's they prefer to work on what's on the right side of the board because it's better to finish work than to start it. And so they are gonna be working uh, 
from the right to the left. And this is what gets you a very responsive team with uh, very, uh, very low work in progress. Um, however, that leads us to a bit of a problem uh, because all of this management stuff and building up these Kanban boards is an awful lot of work. Um, <clears throat> because the the PSAs don't show you this, uh, so you know we know that we need a Kanban board because the PSAs take a lot of clicks to do anything useful. Uh, you know they don't automatically monitor the bottlenecks or the neglected work for you, and there's no place where everybody gets to see the exact same view of the work. So that leads to miscommunications and misunderstandings, uh, and it's a lot of work to make a physical board. And in fact, if your folks are all working from home, you can't even have that at one place in your office where everybody can see it. It's not even possible. So that's what we uh, want to talk about now is how we can make this fast and easy for you. So, uh, you know, as you know, we have made a Kanban board product which hooks up straight into ConnectWise and Autotask, which gives you the best the best of everything. Um, you get the visualizations and the easy management with the Kanban boards. Uh, it allows you to easily identify the bottlenecks and the neglected work. And of course, you're not going to waste any time entering that data into two systems because everything comes straight out of your PSA. So it's kind of the best of all worlds. So uh, let me show you a little bit about what we can do with that. So this is a top left Kanban board, just a really basic version. You can see here how uh, the columns are built out from left to right, new, ready, scheduled waiting in progress we have here and uh, you know these are all very customizable you can have as many columns as you want you can give them whatever names what you do is you associate the statuses of the tickets in your PSA to the columns here so uh, depending on how that works if you don't know, connect wise or auto task they both have ticket and uh, project task statuses and so you set those up so that certain statuses are associated with each column and that's how you actually see these tickets move across the board uh, the chain it uh, everything all the data goes both ways so uh, we know how to set up the board here with the column uh, with the cards in each column based on the status that we see those tickets in and you can also drag the tickets between the columns here right in Kanban and when you do that we go out and change the ticket status in ConnectWise or in the auto task to make it uh, very easy for dispatchers to work for engineers to work, you know, when they drag from ready to in progress and so on. So it makes it very, very easy. You can also see a lot of the key data on the on the cards. As you can see, you know, the title, company, how long it's been in that status, when was the last time entry, you know, budget hours and actual logged hours and, and a lot of the key data and things like that. We allow you to uh, easily set up swim lanes. So here's an example that's showing the swim lanes by the engineer, you know, kind of exactly the same sort of example I showed you before, where we have a swim lane at the top for tickets that aren't assigned to anybody, followed by swim lanes for each of the engineers. We have one here, for example, if you can see that, Terry and Joseph. So you can see that work, you can see their bottleneck, uh, the bottlenecks here. Um, because it's, it's easy to see if someone has uh, many more tickets than somebody else. This is really great for dispatch because the dispatcher can see how busy folks are and who could be a good candidate to get a new work uh, and get a new ticket assigned if you're using the technician dispatch model. It, uh, this view also works really well for a uh, daily huddle. So we certainly recommend that to have a short meeting every uh, every morning with your team to just all be on the same page and understand what's going on in the team and what's the important work right now. And this view that works great for that. Uh, we can also show a view with uh, just, uh, for example, it could just be uh, the swim lane for one engineer, for example, Terry here, but then we also show the swim lane for tickets that aren't uh, assigned to anybody. And if you do decide to have a dispatch mode where engineers are responsible for grabbing those unassigned tickets, then you can have that as a very convenient view here. We also offer other types of swim lane boards, like for example, you can group them by the ConnectWise board or the Autotask queue. Uh, you can do it by the uh, priority or the uh, categorization, like the type, so if you want to split out the tickets that way. It's very useful. You can uh, also use it to very quickly identify neglected work. So here's an example of uh, what you can see here, and Kanban just does this for you. You can um, 
see how long a ticket is in progress. For example, this one's been in progress for 15 minutes, so no problem there, compared to this one that's been in progress for three days. So this one is highlighted for you. It makes it really easy to see that this is a problem. And, uh, you know, both the engineers and the service managers can see this. So ideally, an engineer is going to notice this and deal with this themselves before managers even need to get involved. Uh, so you can also highlight on various other problems, like this warning here, which shows that the SLA is coming due fairly soon. So it gets this orange warning to say, uh, let's make sure that someone's focusing on this so that we can meet that SLA. And uh, problems like when there's been more hours logged on the ticket than the budget. So we can see that as a warning as well. Um, now, if you are using calendar dispatch, either for all of your work, like maybe that's what you're doing right now, and uh, you wanna adopt the Kanban boards as a good visualization, but you don't wanna change all the methods just yet, then we still offer some very useful uh, features that can help with that. Uh, so we can, show indicators on the card here about what uh, who's actually assigned at what time of day. So if that is in the calendar, we can show you that. That you can see with the difference of uh, these assignment indicators here. This one has no outline, so this person is, not, is, is assigned, but not at a particular time in the calendar. And then the colors indicate for people who are assigned at a certain time of day and when that is happening. For example, the blue outline indicates that someone is assigned in the future. And you can hover over that to uh, to get the details of that assignment when that occurs in the calendar. The green indicates that they're assigned today, and the red indicates that they are assigned, but that time is in the past. And so that might be something that needs to be checked up on. We also offer a tool for dispatching into the calendar. So if you uh, select a ticket, you can assign who decide who you want to assign to that and uh, what day you want to assign them. And then we actually go out and look at the uh, look at their calendar that day what either ConnectWise knows about their calendar or, or what Autotask knows about that, and show an indicator like this to say, you know, that this block is already taken, but you can still assign this person at any of the other times, and it just takes a couple of clicks to put that into their calendar. So, uh, you know, even if, uh, whether you're doing that just for work that needs to be done on site, for example, or you continue to use calendar dispatching for a time, uh, then Kanban can make that easier. Here is an example of a project swim lane. So I really haven't talked much about the project stuff. Uh, we do have um, some other webinars. If you look at our uh, YouTube channel, then you can see the recordings of those project webinars. Uh, <clears throat> but I did want to just mention that because I know a lot of you do project work. And so this is an example of a project swim lane. So now we get the project tickets and one swim lane for each project. So it makes it really easy to see you know, in terms of a single project, where are all of the project tickets here? You can see that very easily, but you can also see multiple projects at once. And this is really important for MSPs who always have multiple projects going on at once. And so uh, normally in Autotask or ConnectWise, it takes you a lot of clicks to do any sort of management between multiple projects at once. You're, uh, you either have a whole lot of tabs open and a lot of clicking to, to get there, or you're just doing a whole lot of clicking. And so it really limits how you can manage those projects. But having everything on one view like this, multiple projects, uh, including the details of the tickets that they have and what stages those are in, it can uh, really improve the visibility and allow you to manage these projects so much more effectively. Uh, and finally, we have a few other options that can um, really make your day more efficient. Things that you can do in Kanban that uh, allow you to Just work a whole, a whole lot more effectively by not having to be in ConnectWise and Kanban all out, uh, ConnectWise or Autotask all the time. Uh, so obviously it reduces the number of clicks that you have to do because all of those tickets are just presented right in front of you all in one page. It can show the project and the service work together, uh, with just uh, ConnectWise only for now. Uh, so that can be uh, very effective in order to see everything that your technicians are working on, not just your service work. Uh, like I mentioned, you know, it avoids miscommunications. You can assign and unassign members. So that can be uh, very efficient for a dispatcher. Uh, like I mentioned, you can dispatch to the calendar and engineers can enter their time and notes. And this actually helps them them do it instead of saving that up for later in the day or later in the week or, or whatnot. And you can customize the card appearance 
to uh, highlight the work that's really relevant for you based on certain rules that, um, and how you want to emphasize that in your own organization. And you can also, at least in ConnectWise, you can manage your sales opportunities and your activities. And we have, um, in the future, we'll be adding sales opportunities to the Autotask site as well. So you can get benefit if you're using the uh, the sales modules of those PSAs. So um, let me just explain. Uh, you know, I have a testimonial here. As someone who has made good use of Kanban. Uh, so it's not just us. So this is uh, Judy Baker from Cytel Systems in Seattle. I just had a call with her this week, actually, last week maybe, um, where she you know talked about having a, for sure seen improvement in her team and the visibility of the work. They're having a call every morning to discuss the work. They use Kanban for that so that there's no miscommunications. And uh, they actually had some numbers to track their improvement. In three months since they've been using it, they went from 18 blocked tickets down to 11. And uh, and especially here's the big improvement, 30, where they had 34 active tickets before, now they're down to 11. So they saw some pretty good improvements and that's pretty typical. I think that a lot of you could see those improvements as well. So if you feel like this is something that would be very interesting for you, then go ahead to topleft.team slash schedule call and we can get a demo scheduled with you. Talk about the specifics of your team and what we can do to, to help you. Now as a way to say thanks for um, attending today and by moving forward quickly, if you sign up by June 10th, then we're going to give you 10% off of your first year on annual plans. Uh, so the annual pricing is already way cheaper than the monthly pricing, but we'll give you an additional 10% off of that. That ends up being about 30% off of the regular monthly price with this promo code here, SD2020. And we'll also send you a copy of the Phoenix Project or the book Making Work Visible. Either of these are very useful in terms of uh, teaching you some of these good practices that you can adopt in your MSP to uh, make your customers happy and reduce stress and miscommunications and really improve your workflows. So that about wraps it up, uh, other than time for questions. So uh, I see that we are at the about at the hour now, a little bit past. Um, so if some of you have had to drop off, I uh, understand that. You can certainly get the recording. We will be offering that. But uh, I am around as long as I need to be to answer any sort of questions. So um, just let me uh, just uh, let me take a minute and I will view the questions. Uh, so someone had a question about, uh, let's see. Uh, someone had a question, how many tickets per day is this referring to? And uh, someone else had, I guess, what is seems like a uh, related question. Does this work with really high volume of tickets? Uh, it really can. Um, you know, as you, this is obvious, but you know, every MSP is very different, and uh, some of them work with uh, smaller volumes of tickets. And ticket, you know, it, it's kind of acceptable if a ticket stays open for a week as it makes its way through the system, because the things that their customers ask for are um, more complex compared to other MSPs who just have you know, their style and their customers that they've marketed to are, um, uh, what they end up with is something where, uh, you know, tickets come in and they need to be dealt with immediately. And so we have customers of both kinds. So um, I know of one particular customer, uh, actually let me tell you how this happened. So uh, I had ref showed you these indicators for showing when a ticket is, has been neglected. And initially, we only supported uh, setting these thresholds to uh, a number of days. So it could be like one day, two day, three days, or so on, uh, which you could um, in indicate that these tickets were sitting there too long. Uh, but this one customer came and said, this isn't good enough for us. We, uh, our tickets move through our system so fast, we need to be able to indicate an, an exception condition in terms of minutes or hours. And so we made a feature improvement uh, an improvement to this feature 
for them so that they could indicate these thresholds to say, you know, if a ticket has been sitting in this status for 30 minutes or more, then that's an error. And so uh, I use that to explain that, um, yeah, you can use Kanban for quite a high volume of tickets where things are constantly coming in and constantly moving forward because you can, uh, you know, with a high volume of tickets, you're going to be seeing things move uh, very quickly through your system. And so you can actually set these thresholds to, you know, in terms of uh, minutes or hours or whatever it is that you need to. Um, also, we can support very large teams. So you can absolutely have a team of 10 or 20 people in there. Uh, you know, um, at, it might be a bit overwhelming to have a team of, you know, 20 engineers all, uh, well, in, in practice, you wouldn't, the engineers wouldn't be using the swim lane boards to view their own work. They would have, I, um, could give you this in a demo, but uh, there is a pretty typical way that engineers can see just their own work, uh, and then the you know dispatcher and during the team meetings would you would look at uh, the boards with the swim lanes. And so uh, you know a team with 20 members, uh, you might have 20 swim lanes or 21 with the unassigned work, and so that that could be quite a bit. That might get a good could be that that would get a bit overwhelming, but you know a team of 20 is pretty large as well. So I don't know if you'd really see that. Uh, very commonly uh, but even if you did there would be ways for you to filter that works to, to make it manageable so that you could always just have a, an actual manageable number of tickets whether that's lower volume or a higher volume there are ways to split that up well, if you ever had a board that had too many tickets on it there's almost always a way that you can um, separate that out into two boards that have a manageable number of tickets on them usually what we want to recommend is that the board should represent your um, your your team uh, it's pretty common for ha to have one or more boards per per team because that's how your uh, you know significantly how your group is working is based on teams and so if you have three different teams you'd have at least three different boards uh, you could have six boards you know if you had two kanban boards for each team which is pretty typical as well so yeah uh, it um, can work with high volume of tickets uh, someone asked about, do we offer a trial? Uh, I will say yes, we do offer a trial. And the folks who come through the demo can hear about how the trial works. We have some questions about the billing here. Uh, someone says, I'm reviewing top left with a monthly subscription. If I decide to go through with it and extend for per year billing can i still use the promo code um yeah uh, we, we can do that um so if you're already using it and uh, you want to take advantage of the promo code when you change to annual billing then yes that's that's totally fine uh, just pay attention to the date there the june 10th days i think that would be the key thing for you if that's what you're wondering Someone asks, how much does it cost? Uh, you can see those details. We do post that for everyone on um, on our webpage, topleft.team. And there's a link at the top for pricing. So you can see that it's uh, $27 per member per month if you pay monthly, and then $21 per uh, effectively per month if you pay annually. So you get a good savings there uh, by paying annually in advance. But also if you don't want to commit, that's totally fine as well. Certainly you can get, uh, if you have any other questions about that, then go ahead and schedule that demo at topleft.team slash schedule call. Uh, or there's certainly a link at the top of our <clears throat> web page for scheduling uh, the demo, and then we can talk about the pricing more. Someone else has a question about licensing in a team of 20 engineers and four managers. Do all the engineers need to have a license? Okay, so um, yeah, again, this is something that uh, when we, uh, if you have any questions at all, uh, then be sure to schedule up the demo and we'll tell you everything you need to know. But uh, very roughly speaking, uh, I can give you the basics. Uh, yeah, so the example was 20 engineers and four managers. Uh, the engineers 
you, here's how you typically use it. Uh, the licensing is based on whose work we show you. So in an, in that example, if you had 20 engineers, you'd you know, have a uh, Kanban board with 20 swim lanes. And if you wanted to see all of that work for your 20 engineers, then you would need the 20 licenses um, because a license permits you to show the work assigned to one member. Now, we don't actually require the license to log in and use the boards. So those four managers in this example, they would not need to be licensed. You wouldn't need to pay for them, but they would be welcome to log in and view the boards. So that's kind of how we've structured it so that the folks who are actually generating revenue for you are the ones who are uh, who, who you pay for, for the licenses. But because Kanban is so effective as a team tool, we want everybody in your team to be able to log in and take advantage of that. Now, uh, in terms of the numbers, you, there's no requirement that you license everybody. Uh, so if, for example, you, you know, maybe you did have a team of 20 engineers, but for some reason uh, you were just wanting to focus on the work done by 10 of them, then that's fine. That's totally fine. You can just license the 10 of them, then you'll select which 10 you want to see the work for, and the other 10 you wouldn't see any work assigned to them. I mean, obviously, they're still going to be working in ConnectWise or Autotask. You just won't see their tickets in Kanban. Someone asked, uh, explain Judy's comment, 34 tickets down to 11. Uh, yeah, so she had, ex um, so this was the testimonial. Um, they, so they had 34 ongoing tickets. Uh, what I understood from her was that would basically be the things that, as I described, would be in the started or in progress column. So basically they had 34 things uh, that was in their court to handle. And, and uh, based on, on their team, they were not all in progress at a time. Those were things that you know they had started new work without finishing other work and uh, ended up with these 34 tickets ongoing. Um, but with Kanban and the visibility that it provided, they were able to uh, reduce that by focusing on finishing tickets and moving those cards towards the right and, uh, and got that down to uh, 11 tickets that were in their court. Someone says, can I give permission to a user to make boards? Um, yeah, so we have a, a pretty basic permissions system. Uh, you can have in your system, there will be uh, basically administrators and non-administrators, and you are free to make, uh, oh, so I should say um, administrators have permission to create the Kanban boards and update them as well. And you can, you're welcome to set anyone as an administrator. We have a knowledge base article for that to, that explains how you would go in and uh, select the member that you want to make an administrator so that you can you can have as many people in your team as as administrators as you want so that they can go and make their own kanban boards someone asked do you find that service boards in ConnectWise assist with flowing work into the correct buckets, say, help desk? Just trying to think about that and what um, what this attendee meant by that. Do you find that service boards in ConnectWise assist with flowing work into the correct buckets? Yeah, uh, you know, there are a lot of different um, ideas about how to set up ConnectWise boards. In fact, I think if you asked 10 people what's the best way to do it, you'd probably get 10 different answers. I know that there's a number of consultants uh, out there who have very uh, a variety of, of ideas about how this should be done. Um, so for the Autotask customers here, uh, the ConnectWise board is kind of the key way that you have to organize the work. Um, I think the closest match in Autotask would be the Autotask queue. But uh, the ConnectWise boards really control a lot about how the tickets flow through the, the system. Um, to, it would be very typical to have a help desk board, a uh, like a knock board that all the automated alerts go to, a procurement board, uh, and then there are other project boards and so on. Um, <clears throat> 
So, uh, yes, uh, certainly the design of the ConnectWise boards are something you need to consider very carefully. Um, as far as Kanban goes, Kanban, we, we've set up Kanban to be very flexible. So, uh, we know that people have done a lot of work in, in their de the design of their ConnectWise boards. And uh, for some organizations, it can be a really big deal to change them. Um, like it's kind of a months long process because uh, you, you know there are organizations with hundreds of people using ConnectWise and uh, so it can involve a lot of you know, cabinies and so on if they wanna change that sort of thing. So uh, we, we understand that you have an investment in there and you may not be able to change that very easily. And uh, even if you could change it easily, we don't want you to have to change it to use Kanban. So Kanban has been set up to be very flexible and not require you to have a certain type of uh, setup in your ConnectWise boards. So for example, uh, we have filters that you can apply to determine which tickets you show on a particular Kanban board. And one of the filters that you can use is which ConnectWise board that those tickets are on. So you can say, uh, you know, I, I want to have a Kanban board, but it only shows tickets for help desk. Or if you've used like multiple tiers for that, you could just say, you know, show me just the tier one and tier two or, or just tier one or, you know, all the tiers or whatever. Uh, so it's very, very flexible. And then you, um, then you're presented with all of the applicable statuses from all of those boards, all of the ticket statuses, and then you associate those statuses with the columns. On the Autotask side, the boards, uh, like I said, the closest uh, match is the Autotask queue. So on Autotask, you can have Kanban boards that show work from one particular Autotask queue or two queues or, or without regard to any queue at all. So basically you're showing all of your tickets. So it's very flexible, and um, in that way, you are able to, um, like going back to the original question, can you use Kanban to help put the tickets into the right boards? Um, it doesn't actually, uh, one thing that we don't do at the moment is allow you to change the board that a ticket is on. We would like to do that in the future, but when you've done that in ConnectWise, then there's a variety of ways that you can make use of to um, to handle that work once it's on the right board as you've set it in ConnectWise. And in the future, we do want to make it easier for you to control that sort of thing from Kanban. Uh, someone was wondering, had a question about functionality compared to ConnectWise. In particular, how we um, save on the clicks, allow you to uh, do work faster by not clicking around as much in ConnectWise uh, or Autotask. And so, yeah, to be clear in that regard, uh, we uh, Kanban is not a replacement for everything that ConnectWise does or Autotask does. So, um, you know, anybody could come up with an example of something that you might need to do to a ticket uh, for you know, the, like the example I just mentioned. Well, we do, at the moment, we don't allow you to change the board that a ticket is assigned to. So in that regard, if you, know, if you want to change the board that a ticket is assigned to, you would need to do that in ConnectWise, which you can always get into, whether it's ConnectWise or Autotask. You just click on the title of a ticket. It'll bring that up in the ConnectWise web interface or in Autotask. <clears throat> and then you can always do, you can do what you've always done with those tools. And so everything, uh, all of the options are only at most one click away uh, for things like that. Um, however, some of the things that we do support in uh, allowing you to work faster are uh, a couple of tools that we have, which I'll mention, but also just in the fact that everything is presented in in one page compared to how you would have to, um, you know, like to find one particular ticket or for example, to find uh, all of the work that's assigned to a member, that requires a lot of clicks in Autotask or ConnectWise, whereas in Kanban, that's all just presented in one view. And so you can find that very easily and make certain types of changes. 
very easily. So it saves and clicks in that way. Also, if you want to, like, for example, change a status, you just drag and drop the ticket from uh, one column to another, and that goes back and changes that ticket or that project task status in ConnectWiser Autotask. And then the other functions that we have, uh, which you can do in Kanban, you don't have to go back to ConnectWiser Autotask to do any of these, are uh, dispatching the work. It's basically uh, assigning tickets to uh, to another member or unassigning, um, dispatching into the calendar or creating a service call. You can do that from Kanban. Um, at least on the Autotask side, that's functionality that's coming very soon, like even this week, uh, being able to make a service call. You can uh, enter time. So that's a big one for engineers especially. It allows them to save time compared to what they do in ConnectWise. So um, enter the time onto those tickets as they work them from Kanban. And then you can also change the ticket priority, whether it's ConnectWise or Autotask. And someone asked, do you have a link to the video or webinar around using top left Kanban for project management? Um, right offhand, I don't have the link for that. However, if you go to, uh, you know, if you're looking for our project management webinar recording, then you can go to our homepage and click on the blog link. Actually, maybe I can find that and put that in the chat. Or if you go to our webpage, there's a link at the top for blog. And uh, the latest blog post is MSP Project Management with Kanban, Kanban Webinar. And there's a link to the recording on our YouTube channel. So it's only a few clicks away. Let's see if I can put that in the chat for you. Yep, I've put that in the chat. And that about sums it up. I think that's all the all the questions that we had. Okay, thanks uh, thanks to everyone who attended. Appreciate that. And hope to hear from you soon. Jordan, over to you. Thanks, Matt. Excellent presentation. To everyone, thank you for attending today's webinar. For those of you whose questions were not addressed, a member of the team will be reaching out to you personally. Thank you and have a great day. That does conclude today's webinar event.